Hello, Peace Fiends. My name is Bora, and I am a energy reader, multi-dimensional channel, and the peace dealer has agreed to help me spread my work a little bit. Calling me a peace fiend because, you know, the peace dealer, peace fiend, I think that's pretty funny. But if you don't find it funny, I'm so sorry. I have a weird sense of humor. So here I'm going to read your energy, but centering around your rising sign because in esoteric astrology, your ascendant slash your rising sign is your gateway towards ascension and following the higher traits of each of your ascendant signs is going to really balance out your whatever other complex you have going on as a human. So in attempt to kind of help you highlight those qualities and have you focus a little bit more on your ascendant than your sun sign or your moon sign as you might usually do uh, that is my desire so looking at energy and looking at your complex which is the astrological sign and without this body of astrology we wouldn't have this experience of time right because they're the ones that kind of fragment this timeless continuum into having with their electromagnetic fields kind of warping that timelessness into this structure so it definitely is valid and people who don't understand the val validity of these planetary bodies I, I don't know I feel bad for them okay all right then I just like dropped the card underneath this furniture and I don't know if I can get it back it was the two of swords so definitely you're not able to make a decision so this one goes out to the air signs okay and uh, if your ascendant sign if your rising sign is an air sign then this is for you and what just happened before i even started shuffling is that the two of swords card went underneath this furniture so i feel like this month you're kind of really stuck between making two decisions but it comes from a place of transcending it like you can't even get to make the decision because a level of you knows that you don't have to make the decision it doesn't matter which decision you make or what label you put actually this month's energy is that you don't need to make the decision and that's not you're not realizing there's something more beyond making some sort of decision um, and partially it comes from an understanding of you know this parallel universes and all these dimensional realities that you can surf through basically or you can create these sub realities that it's not necessary for you to always decide upon something you have to get comfortable with this idea of just this quantum state of being more than one thing at once and that's actually your central theme for this month and i hope that this makes sense to some of you whatever issue that is on your mind that you feel like you have to make a decision that you feel confused about making the decision your advice is to get comfortable with this mystery of not being something so defined and i see a lot of you know air signs obviously they like to understand things they get a knack out of making logical logical boundaries about something because obviously when you believe in something and when your perception is wanting to perceive something you can always make logical narratives around that you know your brain does that it's called confabulation is when it starts to make up sequences that wasn't even there before in order to kind of understand what happened that's what the ego does and your biggest kind of challenge this month will be to transcend this rationality, transcend your knack for logical comprehension. I mean, understanding something and knowing something is a very third dimensional trait. And part of that comes from the fact that knowing something assumes that whatever you're perceiving is defined that it's solid that it's ever fixated as something that's containable but the reality of any truth is always changing that's the whole epiphany of quantum mechanics 
So when you're navigating to this fifth dimension, which I intend, you know, if you're tuned into this peace dealer channel, then you're probably more awakened than the rest of humanity, which is why you're on here, right? And you do realize, like, everybody's talking about this fifth dimension. Well, what is that about? It's like your perception's got to get used to everything being ever fluctuating. It's not solid anymore. It's not third dimensional. It's fourth density. It's fifth dimensional. So be okay with not knowing stuff because that allows flexibility in your environment. That allows flexibility in truth, which absolute truth cannot be structured. Only relative truth is structured around your perception. So if your perception is in development, it's okay not to know something. Okay. That was a really dramatic way to kind of channel that message for you is this freaking card flying out. Now, after this reading, I will have to um, move this entire furniture to get that card. This is so cool because I've never read for astrological houses. I've always, imagine if I'm always reading for like Arcturians and Dramanians. <laughs> it's a complete different energy to tune into a collective. Because I obviously do private readings, right, with clients, but that's just like one person versus like I'm tuning into um, galactic systems. So now it's like I'm tuning into this collective of elements basically and it's a completely different bandwidth and it's really awesome i'm glad to be doing it Okay. Wow. All right, so your central energy is actually um, letting go of this way that your consciousness projects future timelines. So if you look at an exponential growth curve, it goes from like having barely any progress at all, and then once it hits a critical mass point, it like literally explodes. And I feel like you've hit this mark well, it's not that I feel like I know that you've hit it because that's the energy um, where you've literally watched it, your life and how it unfolds to a point like this time when you're watching this is actually that critical mass point where it starts to explode. So I'm not sure if you have heard of this mathematical kind of riddle where it goes, if somebody were to give you a penny every single day and multiply it daily versus if somebody gave you a dollar and added to the previous amount every day which one would you choose and by the time you heard of this you were probably like super little so you might have chosen this dollar because it if you start calculating it it just seems like the penny will get nowhere but the funny thing is eventually and like very soon the penny hits like a million dollars like real quick and that's an exponential growth curve and that's where your life is and to me you've always kind of felt like your life isn't going as steady as you see some of the other people's lives unfolding. And so you have this very slow kind of expectations on things, how things work out. But you need to really let that go right now because you've hit this point 
where it's gonna start taking off really quickly and it doesn't matter like when I say you should let it go if you feel like you can't that's totally fine but that's what happening anyway like it, it hit the point <laughs> but the thing is while you were waiting for this to happen you kind of had an opportunity to really get to know yourself so if you were ever wondering like how come other people they get this success that that you know you you always dream of like even if you're successful right now there's a part of you that always knew you were meant for something bigger and if you were wondering you know i'm such a nice person benevolent whatever i serve other people why isn't it happening it's because this energy of like having this slow start gave you a level of enlightenment that you could have never got otherwise because when you have this external success that's mirrored back very uh, very quickly then you would be so distracted by your external environment it would kind of be hard to get to know yourself on a level that it has been this deep for you because this isn't your foundation and um while you're waiting it's like you got enlightened so that's good but enough is enough you're going to start seeing it and, and you you are at a point where your internal space is so evolved that no matter what happens on the outside you're kind of able to maintain this level of self-awareness it's not going to go anywhere so good on you and you actually come from a place in the recent past of you know feeling confident you do have the confidence to go through this and I feel like it quite took you quite some time to get to this level of confidence, especially if you're an empath. And if you're tuned into this collective reality as an empath, even if you don't feel like you're constantly tuned into the collective, you constantly are tuned into the collective. Even if you feel like your default state of mind is your own, there's a level of you that's always connected to the collective. And so... If you ever felt this sense of doubt or that you feel like there's a some sort of a boundary between you and your fullest potential and a part of you is like doubting that it could ever happen, that was not necessarily from you and your past conditioning, but just you're tuning into the collective. And despite that, you've come to a point where because you were able to reflect on yourself internally, you've cultivated this empress energy which also if you're a libra ascendant you also had to um get to a level where you feel comfortable being your best self because that takes quite some energy and some deprogramming of the normal societal standards for you to understand a level of if you shine as brightly as you can sure there's people who are going to be intimidated by that or the people who are going to you know feel threatened by that but have you realized that those are just egoic perspectives and they all have higher selves and if you really want to help them grow you have to be comfortable with their initial discomfort so you get to a point where you don't even feel guilty about that anymore and i think I want to share with you this uh, Course in Miracles phase where if you transcend the emotion of guilt, it naturally has a byproduct of attack that is unjustified, so attack of any sort. So when you transcend guilt, it doesn't mean that you don't have uh, morals anymore. It just means that it balances out to a point where you don't have tolerance to any form of attack. So yeah, the society making you feel like guilt is a necessary emotion in order to have a just society is complete crap. It's not true. Because energetically, it plays out the complete opposite. Okay. <clears throat> and your crown position is the Wheel of Fortune. So it's at a point where, like I said, all of the work that you've been cultivating, all of the internal work that you've been doing is going to just unfold on its own. It's going to look like it's unfolding on its own, but it's almost like when you have this um, winding toy and you wind it again and again and again, that was work on your part. And when you release it, it looks like the toy is like walking by itself, but actually you've been doing all the work. So it's an internal external balance, but this is what you're going to be getting is is almost going to seem like this overnight success, right? 
when you hit this mark, which you are hitting this mark, I would say give or take two to three weeks, you're going to get your first ripple of this effect. And then, you know, three months or something like that. I mean, I don't usually read timelines, but sometimes I do when it's so obvious. And that's really freaking awesome. I hope you're happy hearing this. Well, moving on, your near future, you have the Queen of Swords with the Six of Swords. So while, I mean, as if I'm not reading for Ascendant Air Signs, there's all these swords, but, um, you know, as an Ascendant Air Sign, right, the higher qualities of the Air Sign is alignment to the higher mental body so not necessarily associating yourself with this lower egoic state of the mental body but the higher mental body is like absolutely on a next level when it comes to this mentality right it's it's made of a finer subtler frequencies it's not you know mental like cognitive it's an integrative approach of the right and the left brain it's a it's based on a quantum kind of pipeline not a linear one so that's where you're headed and there's a part of you that has cultivated this kind of i guess stoicism so what i want to say is yeah you've been through all of these things and you've been there and done that and part of you might feel a little bit wounded from how you had to go through all of this and you know if i had to deprogram all of these experiences why did i have to experience it from the first place but i feel that i'm meant to assure you that going through these tumultuousness has resulted in you cultivating this level of discernment and discernment is extremely priceless discernment allows you to experience the infinity of creation with attracting and magnetizing very specialized frequencies that you would otherwise not be able to experience and that's the paradox of kind of being higher density beings you don't have the level of discernment that you would have as an ascendant person who came from a density like the third dimension the third density and coming from the third density, you are going to be able to create things that otherwise you would not have the depth of emotional and mental frequencies to pierce through. And you have this sword that you're going to be able to kind of create things with, which is this experience of going through the mental bodies that you have thus far. Hope that, that makes sense so weird that you have the seven of swords um i have to actually clarify this i'm so confused why that's there well i know f on a certain level my god shut the f what wow Um, well, I see here that in your self position, even though this is like all of your energies, like for now, currently, like right now, right now, what you're struggling with is a romantic relationship. And it makes a lot of sense because obviously like whatever you're tuning into this it's venus retrograde and i'm not like such an astrological person <laughs> i mean i am i'm into esoteric astrology but i'm not the the most current astrology type person um that's the peace dealer but i know that there is a venus retrograde and it's in scorpio and it's 
you know, Scorpio being a house of transformation and death and subconscious things and things that people don't usually talk about. Sorry for all the noises. It's so annoying, right? Um, this is what's bothering you. Like something's happening with your soulmate, potentially even a twin flame. You have the lovers and the six of cups, which is like, it's screaming like, look, it's a soulmate relationship. It's a twin flame relationship. It's from past lives. It's like a next level connection, but you're losing sleep over it. You're God, like, it, it's just really, uh, really demonstrating this Venus retrograde. But look, it's a good thing because it's helping you realize things about yourself or your belief systems about love and how it unfolds in this dimension that it's a good thing that you're getting triggered like this. I know it's, like, annoying to hear this, you know, from a reader because who wants to hear that, but... See when you're sabotaging yourself in terms of your your romantic relationship because relationships are the most visceral, direct, and bold in the face way of experiencing the relationship you have within yourself with your higher selves and you, your internal alignment and basically how you how you manage the various different complexes that make up your human individual consciousness. So whether that's mind, bodies, emotions. Um, or whether that's the masculine and feminine polarities of yourself or whether that's just even on a biological level you have different biomes in your gut you have left and the right sides of your brain you have your heart you have your you know all these different parts of your body that have their own neurons they actually are all different collective consciousnesses that you kind of generalize as yourself but they have all these different filters and perceptions. So that just being one example. Another example could be that you're a 12th dimensional being having this third dimensional experience. So all the different dimensions are always being channeled through this third density perspective, right? Well, going on to fifth. And um, how you manage the different channels of input, of information internally is reflected on an external level in relationships so if somebody is triggering you on this level it's an absolutely amazing opportunity for you to reflect upon yourself and think like why is this person triggering me so much what are they doing that's triggering me so much what kind of fears are there what kind of labels am i putting there what kind of person perceptions am i holding what kind of expectations do i have about this person that is you know calling out for attention and when you can figure that out and translate that about into how you're treating yourself and the relationship you have with your with yourself vice versa it's gonna grow you on a level that's like literally the one of the most influential parts about you hitting this critical mass point like i said you're hitting right now right this cessation of linear progression is coming from this trigger of this venus retrograde slash soulmate relationship and what you can reflect about this person slash how that translates to your internal landscape because as i like to remind you your external reality is a carbon copy of your internal landscape so if you can just kind of wrap your head around that if you've never encountered that kind of thing before there you go i don't know what what else to add to that okay um your environment is just very confusing to you you don't know what's going on you don't know how to settle this but this is exactly what i was talking about when the two of swords fell under the table that i can't reach right now and remember when I say you have to be okay with uncertainty. You have to get comfortable with flexibility. You have to get comfortable with the fact that even this person, whoever this person came up, this soulmate, if it's not a romantic partner, it could be anything else. Like, come on, it could be your subpersonality. It could be your career. It could be anything that is like a soul contract to you that was like, but most likely it's romantic because lovers and the six of cups, like, and then, you know, the Venus retrograde, most likely romantic partner. It's so confusing to you, but this is exactly where you apply this, that you're trying to understand this person and you're trying to understand where you stand in relation to this person, but you're assuming that this other person is a fixed thing. 
you understand that you have evolutions like every day if not every hour if not every moment you feel like a completely different person don't you well if you're on this ascension path and you're tuned into these like you know energy readings and things like this i would assume that every day you wake up and you feel like a new person basically or that you have a new perception and everything you do changes you on a, on a smaller scale like every time you watch any movie or you listen to music or you go do this you read a book you integrate the energy and you are a little bit of a different person and you expecting the other person to be any different is unfair that person is undefined just as you're undefined that person is constantly an ever fluctuating product of quantum mechanics just as you are so this is where you have to start getting comfortable with that and even the notion that somebody's your soulmate and your twin flame sorry about this train there's this train passing um, but i think it's pretty cool that you got to watch the sunset and now it's dark i think it says a lot about the transformations that you're going through and whatever happens during a reading i mean is very reflective upon your energy so um okay so um you have to be comfortable with uncertainty and through this uncertainty what you'll end up learning is that if you've ever treated your belief systems as some kind of fixed absolute reality you're growing up to realize that everything you experience as a subjective perspective everything other than your constant state pure of awareness like pure awareness that's not associated with emotions um thoughts or uh belief systems when you're aware of your awareness that's pretty much the only thing that's really absolutely true but anything under that which is including your thoughts emotions perspectives subjectivity is only a relative truth and so actually that would mean on the other hand that if you ever if you ever undermined your own perception or your own perspective as just a perception or just a perspective that's also wrong in a sense that it's actually relatively true you have to start giving yourself less credit for the reality that you fixate upon as absolute truth and you have to give your perception more credit for being a relative truth so there's a little bit of a balance that needs to happen there uh your hopes and fears you want to be focused on work and this is very uh you want to work on yourself first of all but I, I feel that you want to work on your mission you want to work on your uh career or life purpose whatever creative endeavors that you are doing you want to kind of detach yourself from all of this emotional stuff and you want to focus on your work which is fine totally fine but make sure you don't you know take this as lightly as like don't don't if you're coming from a place of that's cool but i'm gonna let it motivate me it's amazing but if you're like focusing on work in for the sake of not paying attention to your emotional state or whatever uh don't do that well you can whatever it doesn't matter you can do whatever you want but i would suggest not to do that your final outcome believe it or not is a fool which means that you're going through a new new chapter new paradigm and this is gonna be uh this is a, a completely different book it's not even a new chapter it's a completely different book and I, I told you in the beginning that your main energy is that you're hitting this point like i love to use the example of like soundcloud rappers who literally go from like being nothing into having millions of followers the next day and you know you've shifted timelines into something unfathomable like that's actually what what i'm feeling for you and thank this person for this energetic reflection because without them you wouldn't have got here have got here okay um a few oracle cards i pulled for you first i got ceremonies and celebrations and obviously when you have this new beginning you're going to be celebrating um so prepare for the celebration think of the way you know your biggest dreams just came true how would you celebrate it would you plan a travel would you go and like pop bottles what would you do what's your favorite thing to do like just plan it for a second and then yeah move on and then do that later when it happens it's gonna happen 
Um, what's also coming up is purification and detoxification. It's asking you to release physical and energetic toxins in your life. So I would actually say that if your initial reaction from this seeing this uh, celebration card versus like you you're gonna you're gonna make it to the next level how you want to celebrate, and if you were thinking like oh I'm gonna get really messed up, I hope you don't do that because. I, I don't think you're going to want to do that because a lot of the times when you think about it from the lower perspective, you want to go um, do something crazy to celebrate. But if you actually get to that point where you know you hit a next level, uh, you have a different perspective on celebration. And until this actually happens, I want to ask you to stay strong in your faith because this positive outcome is assured but you also need to ha start having higher expectations for reality like i said before like your expectations are kind of resting at like um like you're kind of used to things not happening for you or something like this or just this level of success that you experience just has been minuscule compared to what you always wanted but this is a time that you need to really deprogram that level of expectation and just try your best to have a miraculous expectation that was a motorcycle um and i would suggest like if you if this is a real problem for you that you cannot fathom having really miraculous expectations for your life what i would recommend um a tool that i would recommend is if you like reading i would suggest a course in miracles if you've already read it all i would still suggest going back to it because these are multifaceted texts like they're multi dimensional and you never get the same picture from reading it twice or three times Number two would be um, EFT, which is Emotional Freedom Technique. It works very well for people who are extrasensory. And number three would be... Um, I forgot the number three. I forgot what, I, what else I was going to recommend. If you have a hard time having faith for yourself. No, I forgot number three. But okay, just take the number either two of them. Oh, subliminals. You could you could uh, listen to subliminals. And I, I know a lot of people would be like, what, subliminals don't work? But it doesn't work for pipes that are clogged. So what I like to say is if you're very conscious, number one, and energetically um, amplifying whatever contacts you, which is a lot of advanced people who have a clear frequency and they're aligned, things like subliminals can work very well. But you just have to be of a more transparent enough frequency. That, like you can't be energetically blocked and expect subliminals to work, right? Um, EFT is more for you if you have like this huge blockage. Well, no, actually they will all work. Everything will work. But you also have to find the right producers. You can't just listen to whatever. You have to vibe it out because literally if you could vibe the subliminals and the music that comes from that, and it feels good that's when you should listen to it over and over again right uh, my personal favorite subliminal producer is dr virtual seven uh, people have mixed feelings about him but i love his early work i don't necessarily resonate with all of his recent work but that happens to me a lot it happens to me a lot that i really dig somebody's early work um and then i move on from them but yeah i really love his early work i still listen to it and i um accredit a lot of my healing from dr virtual seven so yeah uh, if you resonate with me you'll probably resonate with him too thank you so much for tuning in thank you for resonating with me thank you for watching this far if you like this video please leave a comment please leave a comment or like it because it's going on somebody else's channel so if you don't like me and you don't give a response then i can't come back um and thank you the peace dealer so much for um featuring me here and i will hopefully talk to you guys later bye